So it's been a year since I made a video on how to soften stiff, scratchy, and possibly vintage acrylic yarn. And it's been the most popular video on my channel so far. Like I said, I made it about a year ago. I was pretty new on YouTube. Since then, I've gotten a little more experience, but I thought instead of trying to recreate that video, I could go back and answer some of your questions and comments that have come in this past year. These videos will help you out if you are a person who buys and uses budget acrylic yarn like I do sometimes. It's important to stay on a yarn budget. Maybe you are thrifting yarn or using up some vintage yarn in your collection. Another good reason you might need to soften stiff acrylic yarn is if there's a colorway or a pattern that's only available in a budget brand like Red Heart Super Saver. If this sounds like something you need to know, stick around. I wanna start out by saying Red Heart Super Saver is a great budget yarn. I love it, I use it for all sorts of projects. In fact, one of my favorite of the Red Hearts is their Red Hot, Red Heart Ombres. I am so bummed because this one called Hot Sauce is no longer available. I'm not gonna throw it on right at the moment, but I did make this uh, snood. It is my Enid snood, kind of inspiration from the Wednesday show. I have a video, I'll have it linked below if you are interested in how I made this. But look at this colorway. It is just absolutely gorgeous. This type of yarn, not only is it budget friendly, but it's pretty much available anywhere. <laughs> I live very rurally. I can find this at a Walmart in a town of 4,000. Super savers everywhere. It is there are tons and tons of colors. So a lot of us are using this yarn, but sometimes it is not right or doesn't feel right for the project we want it to. The downside of this yarn is that oftentimes because it is a budget yarn, it is stiff, it can be scratchy. It just doesn't really drape the way you would want it to. I can help you with those first two items on there, the stiff and scratchy, but as far as the drape, this technique won't really help with that. The only thing I can offer to size up from the hook uh, by a few sizes, um, just to give it a little more um, openness and a little bit more drape. Do want to add the disclaimer that I am making this video and the previous video on acrylic yarn. I don't want you to grab your expensive yarn that might have natural fibers in it that might be hand dyed. Those are all variables that I just can't account for in this. So please use some discretion. Again, it may or may not work. I do have at least one comment I know of where they said they did use it with a wool blend successfully, uh, but I don't have experience with that. I will let you know if you haven't seen that video, which I will have linked. The big secret is to use shampoo and conditioner. And in the video, I took a scarf I had made. It was a keyhole scarf, so it should be a little drapey, um, but it was vintage Red Heart. And I had thrifted it, but I absolutely loved the color. I believe it's called Windsor Blue, and it may or may not be available. I'm not sure still. So what I did in the video is I took the yarn, or I took my scarf, my finished project, I stuck it in some warm to cool water, just to, comfortable for my hands. And I got my project completely wet, completely soaked through. I put it in the other sink basin and squeezed out the water. I did not wring the project, but I just kind of squeezed out some water. Then I put hair shampoo in. I just used Dove, I believe that's what I had, um, or it might have been Ren Pure. I like both of those. They're both available at like Target and Walmart. Cheap, easily available, come in big containers. <laughs> so I lathered that all up and got it worked through the entire scarf. At this point, I then put it back in the other sink basin and, and rinsed it out, got it nice and um, like till all of the suds ran clear, like pretty much exactly how you would do shampooing your hair. At that point, again, I squeezed some of the water out, but not all put it back in the other sink basin and put in a bunch of conditioner. I found out a couple things. It took way more conditioner than I thought it would <laughs> for this scarf. But again, like I said, I just used 
pretty inexpensive pro products, um, so it wasn't a big deal to me. I worked that all the way through so I could feel it and all of it, and I did let it sit about 10 minutes. Came back, rinsed it out exact same way as before, where um, it just till it ran clear, and then squeezed a bunch of water out. End of process. You know, this doesn't change the chemical makeup of acrylic yarn but it does like soften up the fibers that are on the outside this is just a great way it's inexpensive it's pretty quick and you know if you're giving um like i said a scarf a stocking cap um you know any number of things maybe even a baby blanket that you want to be real durable this is a great technique to just give it a little bit more softness and kind of help just kind of tip it over the edge let's get started answering these viewer questions and comments does this affect the color i have multicolored yarn and would hate it to discolor i cannot speak for um nicer handmade hand dyed yarns i have no idea how um those are dyed how that would affect it but you know acrylic yarn basically comes from plastic so um, I'm pretty sure these colors are already in there I don't know exactly how it works but this should not affect it because again we are not changing the chemical makeup of this yarn it is just smoothing the outer layers just like the outer layers of your hair you know get that cuticle layer to smooth down is it worth doing this to the ball of yarn first or once the item is crocheted i've never done this to a skein of yarn i my concern for myself would be um, that i would get it way too tangled so i personally wouldn't mess with that um, I understand the viewer's question because uh, I've had projects before where why I'm working on them, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my fingers were aching um, from how scratchy it was. And I was probably maybe using a little too tight attention as well. I would be afraid I would get it too tangled by trying to do it to the skein. And then my other concern would be that I wouldn't be able to get the skein dry enough like all the way through that perhaps it would maybe mold or mildew and I would just want to avoid that as well. Um, okay, I kind of ax actually answered this already. Is the process permanent or would you have to repeat the process every time you wash an item? I'm thinking especially of children's hats, scarves, mittens. I don't make these garments from expensive yarn because the items are frequently lost, dragged in the mud, get sweaty etc I totally agree with that like those are definitely items that would probably you would only want to make from a budget yarn so a lot of this is just going to depend on um how the yarn was when you got it some red hearts are softer than other ones like this one is not bad at all um but I've worked with some that you know weren't fun to work with I know I'm saying red heart but this could be any budget acrylic yarn it's something you're going to have to just do on a case by case basis and um you know if you're using a pretty strong detergent like throwing these things in the wash it will probably wash you know wash out the conditioner just the same way as when you um, use a fabric softener on something you know when you wash it again it, it it should get washed out. So it is something where you probably would want to repeat the process ever so often. But if you are hand washing your items, it adds like one extra step. And I guess I don't see that as, you know, too much of a big deal. So um, yeah, if you were hand washing them, I would just, instead of use detergent, I mean, I guess depending on how dirty the item is, she did say her kids drag uh, those garments through the mud. So she may actually need to wash with detergent first. At which point I, you know, if I was running it through the washing machine, I would just not put it in the dryer. And then I would go ahead and just do this technique to it. Would this also work for cardigans and then she says specifically cropped. I use the Red Heart brand and I'm working on sleeves right now, but they seem very stiff. So I would think a cardigan would be fine to do this on. A lot of it is gonna depend on what you're comfortable with, you know, kind of tackling wet. A cardigan, I, I would probably be able to fit easily in my kitchen sink base and that wouldn't be a problem for me. This would get a little bit trickier if you were doing a blanket, a uh, baby blanket would, you know, probably still be manageable, but like a blanket to go on the bed, um, you know, you could, 
obviously do it in the bathtub, it's going to be a lot harder to handle wet and to get all that water out. So I think, you know, a garment like that, you know, top, cardigan is still probably pretty easy to do it on. It's going to get more difficult as you go up. Uh, this is kind of similar. Um, does it say soft after this or do you have to do it once a season, once a year, once a month? Again, depends on your garment, how much you are washing it and drying it and how um, stiff and scratchy it was to begin with. This one says, I bought some Red Heart yarn. I got it home and it's already scratchy and low quality. I haven't used it yet. Can this technique on the brand, can I use this technique on the brand new skein? Should I return it and get a new skein? For this, you know, I would say just keep in mind that because it's a budget acrylic, it, it from just off the bat, it is, you know, it's not going to be as comparable to something that is made um, in a different manner with different materials. So um, with this, she, I would say again, definitely you could do it after the project is right, done. I would not attempt it beforehand personally. Um, and as far as returning it, pretty much any Red Heart you buy is probably going to feel about the same. Like I said, some of them are softer than others. If you were to go to Joanne or Walmart or something like that, they're probably going to be very similar dye lots if they're not the same dye lot. So what they have in stock is probably going to be about the same as what you purchase. So if you, you know, it's something where, you know, if you do this technique even and just don't like the results, I would suggest maybe throwing a little extra money in your yarn budget to get a little bit different or higher quality yarn for those special projects. How did you dry your scarf? Air dry or or dryer. When I did this project, what I did was, again, I tried to squeeze out as much of the water as I could. Then I put it on a towel. I didn't want to mess with, you know, stretching my scarf out or getting it into a weird shape. So I put it on a towel and then I put another towel, like bath towel, um, on top of that. And I rolled it up just to like, squeeze the water out of it, if that makes sense. Um, at that point, after I had gotten out what I could, I stuck it on the top of my deep freezer and I just pointed a fan at it. You know, it was just gently, just like a regular air, you know, like a like the fan some of us have pointed on us when we sleep at night. I would still call that air drying. I am not a huge fan of putting these type of yarns in the dryer. When I wash something like this, I do try to put them in um, one of those like mesh laundry bags, um, but then I don't put them in the dryer just because this is not low pill or no pill yarn. It's it's pill yarn. I don't like putting them in the dryer. I would 10 times out of 10, um, unless it was some sort of blanket emergency, <laughs> I would let it air dry. A great example is I had thrifted a blanket in Super Saver Aaron Fleck. I have done a project fairly recently with my camper and I used that yarn for my beaded door curtain. I used it for some like little wall pockets for my glasses and my phone and some little curtains for the side of the wall. The blanket I thrifted was the same yarn, but it had been put in the washer and dryer. I could tell. And comparing it side by side with the newer ones I had done, you could really see how the flex were starting to come off just a little bit. And it just looked a little bit sad, <laughs> but it was for my camper. I said I thrifted it at a rummage sale. I was happy with it. It didn't look bad. Like it didn't look um, crummy or gross or anything like that, but it's just one of those where you could tell it had been, it had gotten somewhere from the washer and dryer. Perfect example why I don't like to use the dryer. This comment says, sounds like a little bit too much work for me. I'll just throw mine in the wash by itself on delicate setting with a little bit of sensitive laundry soap and some fabric softener. Fabric softener is definitely a way to go with this as well. I have nothing wrong with that. It's just your preference about, you know, your hand washing versus machine washing and dryer feelings on that. I, here's another one that is somewhat similar. It says, call me lazy, but I soften my acrylic 
yarn items by simply using a steam iron close to the surface of the item but not touching. This instantly softens items. You can wash before or after. This is very interesting to me. I had not heard about this before. She is definitely right. You would not want to get an iron um, to touch the acrylic yarn because that would melt it but that might be something you know to give a try too just getting that steam real close to it because i think don't some people block their items like that as well so that is another way you could probably go on that this one says adding vinegar to the water helps a lot as well i agree because when i'm washing my clothes instead of putting fabric softener um, in the washing machine, I put vinegar in, like just regular cheap white vinegar, in the fabric softener little dispenser and then push the fabric softener button on there. And that does, I have um, well water and so this just helps me. Um, it does, it makes things a little bit softer, but I'm not getting, um, and everybody has their own thoughts. I have nothing against fabric softener, um, but I just don't want like the potential buildup on my clothing. And, you know, um, I have kind of sensitive skin. I'm the type of person where like I get like red and blotchy super duper easy. So I try to avoid a lot of extra fragrances and stuff like that too, fragrances and chemicals. So no, I haven't done vinegar to one of these, but I do know that does work in lieu of a fabric softener. So I think if you were wanting to possibly add this um, to do it to the way my technique, what I would do is um, when I put it the basin of water and um, put my item in there initially before I shampooed it um, and when I was just getting it all wet I might pour like a quarter of a cup or half a cup of vinegar in the sink basin and just kind of let that all soak and then go ahead and rinse that out and then do the shampoo and conditioner. This person does say, I used the conditioner method with yarn who had 20% wool and the rest acrylic. Work like a charm. Here is circumstantial evidence that that has worked for someone um, but it that would be a 20 percent wool and 80 percent acrylic so something to keep in mind that, that um this viewer did not do it on a hundred percent wool that all would make me nervous i don't condone doing that from this video please don't ruin your garment it said it did work for her so i am glad that that did you can take that under consideration if maybe there is only a small amount of natural fiber in your garment. This is the very first like Q&A video I have done like this. This was a lot of fun for me. I plan on doing one with my um, velvet yarn video because that has just a ton of views and ton of comments on there as well. If you want to go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you will be notified when that video comes out as well. But I thank you for spending your time with me. I had fun doing this Q&A and I will pop a video up over here that I think you will enjoy watching as well. As always, I appreciate you talking yarn with me and I hope you have a great day. Bye!